Dear aspirants, welcome to my YouTube channel, Indian Anatomist. Today we are going to discuss the anatomy of the larynx. What is larynx? It is an organ of respiration and phonation. In addition, the larynx acts as a watchdog to prevent the entry of any materials other than air. Where is it present? The larynx is present in the anterior aspect of the neck region. It is located anterior to the inferior portion of the pharynx and superior to the trachea. Communications of larynx, it communicates with the laryngopharynx through a laryngeal inlet above and the trachea below. Measurement of the larynx. Normally the male larynx whose vertical, transverse and anteroposterior dimensions are more when compared to females. Students, who is talking more in your classroom? Please comment. Anatomically, the larynx is made up of cartilages, joints, ligaments, mucous membranes in the laryngeal cavity, and finally the laryngeal muscles. First we will look into the cartilages of larynx. The laryngeal cartilages are classified into three unpaired and three paired. The unpaired cartilages are thyroid, cricoid and epiglottis. The paired cartilages are arytenoid corniculate and cuneiform cartilages. All these cartilages are hyaline variety except epiglottis corniculate cuneiform and vocal process of arytenoid cartilages are made up of elastic cartilage. First we'll see about the thyroid cartilage. Thyroid cartilage is a large, shield-shaped incomplete cartilage. It has paired lamina with superior and inferior horns. The Adam's apple, or laryngeal prominence, is two laminae meeting in the middle. This cartilage protects the vocal cords and produces sound. Voice and breathing depend on this cartilage. The next cartilage is cricoid. The cricoid is a ring-shaped cartilage, situated below the thyroid cartilage. Only, this full airway ring maintains patency, and is necessary for breathing and communication. Cricoid cartilage supports vocal cord moving muscles, ligaments, and cartilage. Cricoid cartilage has an arch in front and broader lamina behind. The next cartilage is the epiglottis, it is a leaf-shaped elastic cartilage. The epiglottis covers the laryngeal inlet when swallowing. For breathing, it returns to its original posture after eating. It has anterior and posterior surfaces, are covered with non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium except, lower half of the posterior surface is, lined by pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Now coming to the arytenoid cartilage. Arytenoid cartilages are tiny, pyramidal shaped structures, situated one on either side of the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. They produce voice, by controlling vocal cord tension, and position. For breathing and speaking, these cartilages open and seal the glottis with the cricoid cartilage. Finally the corniculate and cuneiform cartilages. The corniculate cartilages are small, conical structures located at the apex of the arytenoid cartilages in the larynx. The cuneiform cartilages are elongated, wedge-shaped pieces found within the epiglottic folds, providing structural support to the larynx. It is the time to discuss the joints and ligaments of the larynx. Two joints are related to the larynx. Number one is the cricothyroid joint. It is a synovial type that permits rotatory movements around the transverse axis. The other joint is the cricoarytenoid joint. It is also a synovial joint that allows the rotatory movement around a vertical axis. The next subheading is the ligaments of the larynx. Number 1 is, the thyrohyoid ligament and membrane, number 2 is, the hoepiglottic ligament, number 3 is, the cricothyroid ligament and membrane, and finally, the fourth one is, the cricotracheal ligament. The next portion is the mucous membrane of the larynx. The mucosa of the larynx is, contiguous above with the lining of the mouth and pharynx, and continues below with the trachea and bronchi. The epithelia seen in the larynx are, 1, stratified squamous epithelium, that lines the anterior and upper half of the posterior surface of the epiglottis, upper parts of epiglottic folds, and vocal folds. The rest of the laryngeal cavity is lined by, ciliated columnar epithelium. 
the laryngeal mucosa contains numerous mucus and serous secreting glands, but these are absent over the vocal cords. Now coming to the cavity of the larynx. It is an important part of studying the larynx. The cavity extends from the inlet of the larynx to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage, which is fully covered by mucous membrane. Hi, what are the boundaries of the inlet of larynx? It is bounded anteriorly by epiglottis, posteriorly by an interarytenoid fold of mucous membrane, and on each side, it is related to areepiglottic folds. Anatomically, the entire length of the laryngeal cavity is divided into three regions by two pairs of folds, called vestibular folds above and vocal folds below. Dear students, please see the given illustrations showing the posterior and lateral views of the laryngeal cavity. The three regions of cavity are vestibule, which is situated above the vestibular folds. Next, the space between the vestibular and vocal folds are named as ventricle or sinus of larynx. At last, the lower part of the cavity below the vocal folds is called the infraglottic part of the larynx. For your convenience, see the illustration showing the laryngeal cavity. The left picture is a coronal section, and the right picture is the lateral view of the cadaveric larynx. In the coronal section, the anterior part of the ventricle or sinus of the larynx is prolonged upwards as a diverticulum, called the saccule of larynx. The saccule is present between the vestibular folds and the lamina of the thyroid cartilage. Now, why the saccule is present? The saccule contains numerous mucus secreting glands, which help to lubricate the vocal folds, thus preventing the collapse. Next to the cavity of the larynx, special attention should be given to the vocal folds or cords. These are pearly white and lined by stratified squamous epithelium and devoid of submucosal layer. Deep to the epithelium, the vocal cord contains vocal ligament medially and vocalis muscle laterally. Each vocal cord is further subdivided into anterior intermembranous part and posterior intercartilaginous part. See the illustrations for detail. What is rima vestibuli and rima glottidis? Rima vestibuli is an V-shaped space present between the two vestibular folds or false vocal folds, which allows the passage of air through larynx. Now coming to rima glottidis. Rima glottidis is a space present between the two vocal folds and two arytenoid cartilages. It is essential for sound production. It is partly present between the two vocal folds in front, and the remaining glottidis is present between the two vocal processes of arytenoid cartilages behind. As a result, it has an anterior portion made up of membranes, called as intermembranous part, and a posterior portion made up of arytenoid cartilages, hence called intercartilaginous part. Now, what are the boundaries of rima glottidis? It is bounded anteriorly by angle of thyroid cartilage, posteriorly by interarytenoid fold of mucous membrane, and on either side, bounded by vocal folds in front, and arytenoid cartilages behind. Normally, the intermembranous part is triangular, and intercartilaginous part is quadrangular in shape. The arytenoid cartilage's adduction or abduction movement is maintains the size and shape of the rima glottidis. During quiet breathing, the intermembranous part is triangular, and intercartilaginous part attains a quadrangular shape. During high-pitched sound, the rima glottidis is reduced, due to the adduction of both intermembranous and intercartilaginous parts. In full inspiration, the rima glottis widens, and becomes diamond or enlarged triangular shape due to abduction of vocal folds. Finally during whispering voice, intermembranous is highly adducted, and intercartilaginous is triangular, in this position, the rima glottidis appears as an inverted funnel shaped. Now, we will discuss about the muscles of larynx. The muscles of larynx are classified into extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. The extrinsic muscles contain suprahyoid and infrahyoid muscles, act in concert to provide laryngeal stabilization and allow the vertical displacement of the larynx. On the other hand, intrinsic muscles of the larynx can change the vocal folds length, tension, form and location. These muscles are generally put into four groups, 
adductors, abductors, tensor, and relaxer. Intrinsic muscles are, totally nine in number. They are, cricothyroid, posterior cricoarytenoid, lateral cricoarytenoid, oblique arytenoid, transverse arytenoid, areepiglotticus, thyroarytenoid, thyroepiglotticus, and vocalis. Dear students, for your convenience, the given table showing the intrinsic muscles and their actions and nerve supply. Please go through it. Some special notes on intrinsic muscles, and these are frequently asked in medical competitive exams. Number 1, cricothyroid muscle, is the only muscle present outside the larynx, even though, it is considered as one of the intrinsic muscles, it maintains the pitch of the sound, hence called tuning fork of larynx. Number 2 is, posterior cricoarytenoid muscle, considered as safety muscle of the larynx, because it abducts the vocal cord, wide opens the remoglottidus, thus helps in respiration. Finally, number 3 is, vocalis muscle, which helps in voice modulation. These illustrations showing the various intrinsic muscles of larynx. Till now, we discussed about the external features, cartilages, joints, ligaments, mucous membrane, and cavity and finally the muscles. Now coming to the last part of this larynx lecture contains, blood supply, lymphatic drainage, nerve supply and clinical anatomy. The larynx receives its blood supply from, above the vocal folds, superior laryngeal artery from, superior thyroid artery, branch of external carotid artery, below the vocal folds, inferior laryngeal artery from, thyrocervical branch of, subclavian artery. Usually, the veins are accompanying the arteries, and finally drains into internal huglar vein. Coming to the lymphatic drainage of larynx is, above the vocal folds, the lymph from larynx drains into, prelaryngeal and jugulodigastric lymph nodes. Below the vocal folds, the lymph drains into the pretracheal and paratracheal group of lymph nodes, whereas remoglottidus, acts as a watershed line. Innervation-wise, the larynx is supplied by both sensory and motor nerves. Sensation from larynx. Above the vocal folds, internal laryngeal nerve, branch of superior laryngeal nerve of vagus. Below the vocal folds, recurrent laryngeal, branch of vagus nerve. Whereas motor supply to intrinsic muscles, are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except, cricothyroid, supplied by the external laryngeal nerve, but both are the branches of vagus nerve. Now coming to the applied or clinical anatomy of larynx. First one is, laryngeal obstruction. The upper mucous membrane of the larynx is highly sensitive. Foreign objects such as bones, coins, buttons, and so on, that enter the laryngeal inlet can cause intense coughing and may lead to choking, resulting in, obstruction of the larynx and, suffocation. Immediate expulsion of foreign bodies through the application of the, Heimlich maneuver, is crucial to prevent the victim from succumbing to death, within a matter of minutes potentially even before reaching the, hospital. Please see the illustrations, explains, how to perform the maneuver in both adults and children's. Second one is, lesion of recurrent laryngeal nerve, accidental lesion of recurrent laryngeal nerve during partial thyroidectomy operation, the patient develops hoarse, but no difficulty in breathing. Hardly both the recurrent laryngeal nerve gets lesioned, the patient becomes, aphonic with complaints of difficulty in breathing. Tracheostomy is advised in this condition. Third, is, singer's or teacher's nodule, misuse of overutilization of vocal cords may produce as nodules, and this is common in singers and teachers. See the laryngoscopic view of vocal cords showing the bilateral vocal, or teacher's, or singer's nodule. Fourth one is, laryngitis, infection of larynx, and is characterized by hoarseness of voice. Finally the fifth is, tumors of larynx, vocal cord tumors can irritate the internal or, recurrent laryngeal nerve of vagus, and cause referred pain in the ear, via auricular branch of vagus nerve. The tumors can be excised using operating microscope. Dear students, the lecture regarding the larynx is completed. It is a vast topic. Mistakenly, I may omit some of the details of larynx anatomy, and I advised, you to follow some clinical textbooks. 
If you have questions or queries, please post in comment box. We'll see you in one more video. Stay tuned, and don't forget to subscribe my channel, Indian Anatomist. Good day all.